Welcome back to Municipal Month on the Cross-Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have our guest on to the show today. They are a first-term counselor for the City of Brooks, Councillor Marissa Wardrop. Counselor, thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor and pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine. Um, so, Counselor, if you've listened to the show before, as you said you have, uh, you know the question that I start off all my interviews uh, for my first time guests, and you were no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from, Counselor? Um, you know, I, it came on very young and it was always there. So uh, the political um, sphere was always something that was present in my house. And I always thought of um, politics as a way to get into um, justice, like what doing the right thing, doing the right thing for community. And community was also a really big part of my um, upbringing. And that was where a lot of that um, initial kind of uh, interest in, in serving my community came from. And, you know, as I grew up in Brooks, and um, I left for about eight years and I, I went to university uh, and, and I came back with my husband after uh, we were offered jobs here. And out the last 10 years, I'd seen Brooks change and grow um, so much. And I loved the momentum that I was seeing. And, uh, you know, when the time was right, I, I just felt like I could do my part to keep that momentum going. Like I didn't want to see it stop or slow down. And um, that's where, you know, in a nutshell, that's where I think a lot of that came from for me. Was I municipal, like I could do my part there. Was municipal politics always the first choice? Because you, you had your range of choices that you could have done provincially, federally, but you chose municipally. What was it about municipal politics that was the, the draw for you? Was there a certain issue that was affecting your community? You, you talked about the growth in your community, but there must have been an issue that you said, you know what, I want this fixed, whether it be a road, whether it be a more business attraction, what was that issue for you? And was municipal politics always the one that you were going to go with? Um, I, I think if I were to narrow it down to an issue, because there was something um, particular there for me, it was representation. So I didn't see, um, I didn't see my, myself represented on, on council. And I, I didn't, I felt like I hadn't seen that in quite a while. Um, you know, the, the average age of, of a resident in Brooks is 36. And that puts me right about there. Um, and there were no women. And just those two things, like I wanted to see somebody um, under 40 and a woman there. And I, um, I felt like that was a really a needed space to be filled. And I could do that, you know, being a longtime resident of Brooks. And um, I'm also a teacher. So I just, you know, in, in the schools, that is really like such a, like the heartbeat of a, of a community. It's a, it's a huge part of, of my city and just, you know, getting in there, being there firsthand. And then, you know, my perspective I felt could really offer a lot of insight at the decision-making table. And, and that's why I really, I went there and, and I, it, I have to add, it's, it was, it felt, it felt comfortable there. Like I felt like that would be um, a nice a nice step into into um, you know if I wanted to be an elected official that would be a great step. You, you this is your first term. We are coming up on the one year anniversary since your election. I want to go back to that election night here in 2021 in October. Um, you are one of the few people who I've had on the show who have had that check mark beside their name, who have had that elected beside their name. Um, take me through that moment when that night on uh, in October of 2021, when the news came down that you were the new councillor elect for the city of Brooks. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was kind of surreal. Um, you know, yeah, I remember like I was, sitting there uh, in my in my house with uh, with my dad and my my mom and my sister was, was there my husband was uh, 
was, um, oh my gosh, a scrutineer for me. Okay. So he was able to kind of, you know, keep me updated a little bit here and there. Um, and yeah, when we got the official, official word in, I, I don't know, my jaw dropped. I think everyone, like my, my family and I had a couple of friends, you know, text, like everyone was texting, right? Uh, it was a delayed response because everyone's like, yeah, like it, it's happening. It's I'm like, oh my goodness. I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was shocked. It felt surreal, but I was really excited and, and, and proud, proud of myself for, for doing that too. So, so when does the moment from proud and excitement turn to, oh my (laughs) gosh, what have I just gotten myself into? Because for those who don't know, this is municipal politics is the bread and butter of politics. This is the first line of politics. This is the politics that is about water, about power, about garbage, about street cleaning, you name it. Local councillors are here from their residents on a regular basis of how the city is functioning. When did that sink in for you to go, oh no, now the decisions that I'm about to make are going to not only affect myself, but my neighbor, my kid, the, the students that I teach at uh, their, their parents, when does that moment sink in for you? Um, it, no, it was, uh, it was during the first budget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it happened so fast, right? So like we were elected and then, and then it felt like the next day it was like, all right, like we're, we're going through and we're, we're working on the budget. And I went, oh, wow. Yeah. Like what a huge responsibility on our shoulders um, to be, to be used, you know, having people's hard earned money and all these tax dollars um, and making decisions like there you are, you're making decisions right away and you're, and you're right. And, uh, and municipally, like you walk down the sidewalk, you go, I go to the coffee shop and um, people there know you, right. You're, you're, you're recognizable, they, that's their street, right? Like it's just, everything is just right in your face and it, you're right, it gets real really fast. How did <laughs> but you, we have how such how a great did you overcome that? How did you overcome that as a first-term counselor? Because it, you have to separate personal and work uh, uh, during this. And the decisions that you have to make have to be made for the best of the community. So that first budget, while it was worked on by the previous council you have to look at it pass it with administration Mm -hmm. how did you balance that because that must have been the for me would have been the biggest learning curve of going okay I have to get up on what the issues are I have to get up on where the tax dollars are being spent and then I have to go downtown and pick up my mail and I'm going to have to tell people why I voted for or against this budget yeah um there was a lot there was a lot of learning like we got that we got that package and I went through and um, I'm already like a professional nerd. Right. So like I read and read and read. read. I <laughs> love so, it. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of reading. There was a lot of question asking. Um, I, I also, uh, I, uh, I called up my dad a few times to um, him being, you know, the previous mayor and I, I got some, uh, some context for a lot of those, you know, decisions and a lot of those um, packages. And and if I didn't quite understand something, I was able to say, like, you know, like, hey, four years ago or three years ago, you know, what was going on? So I could at least get a little bit of context. And uh, the other thing too is like our administration is just phenomenal. Like they're, you know, you have a question, they're there with it. Um, and they just had things running like a smooth machine. So. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt here for a second. I just want to clarify something that you just said. Are you saying your father's Barry Morishita? Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. He's Barry. Yeah. That's my dad. I did not know this. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And sometimes I don't like, I don't know if people know or not. And so when it comes up organically, I have to say, otherwise it's weird if I didn't say, right. So I, I, wasn't I, I honestly did not know this oh. is. I, I, because the only reason I, I reached out to you is because I was like, okay, I need some uh, different people who were first elected. And I, I, I looked at the, some cities and I looked at counselors and your name came up because you were following me on Twitter. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's so, 
that's right. That's my dad. Um, and okay. So you, you had, you had, so he swore you in. He did. And it was like, it was such a great moment. It was such a special moment for us. Yeah. That was his last act as mayor. Oh was my to swear God. This yeah. small world. I get again, would not have. Okay. Two and two equals four now. Okay. It's all, you know, and I got so much of that. Like when I was running, um, because I go by wardrobe, not Morishita, right? Uh, I got a lot of that. Most of the doors I knocked on didn't know that we were related. Uh, or if they did, they didn't say anything, but I don't oh. have the, I don't have the presence or <laughs> that my dad has at this point. So I was just kind of a teacher from the community and yeah, still well, out. <laughs> I'm glad that we had you on then because this is a, this is a fun story that I okay um yeah. I want to turn to that this last first the first year in council for you because uh you get into politics you well now I know that you you know about politics from seeing your father at work and doing what he's done but for you, what is the learning curve that you had to overcome in that first year? Because I can imagine um, you getting in there wanting to be your own person. So you you were trying to do this yourself. So what was the learning curve for you that you had to overcome o- over the last year? And I say that because you're always learning. You're always trying to better yourself. And But that first year is always the rough year because you, you make mistakes, you, things come up and you go, okay, how does this get done? For you, what was that learning curve like? Yeah, um, it was big. Like it was, I can't, uh, I, I was, it was really humbling. Like there is so much to learn um, and I was ready for that. And I, I think, you know, if I was, uh, if I was too worried about making mistakes, I definitely would have wouldn't have gone out and, and ran for council. But um, there was there was so much, like a lot of the technical stuff, um, learning about that whole like web of like how the city functions um, is so different once you're inside it. Um, like I told you, I'm a nerd, right? I'm a professional nerd, but all your poli sci classes, all of your, you know, I teach, I teach municipal government either. I did it for years in grade six. Um, it's so different once you're in it, right? Those those jobs are attached to faces and people and um, and context that just you don't have unless you're in there. So there was a lot of like that that stuff, the process. Um, and then for me, the I think uh, the other biggest thing would be the like decorum and um, learning how to uh, communicate and get my point across while um, you know still following decorum and using that all of the formalities and uh, the processes there. It's, it's harder than, it's harder than it looks for sure. What would you yeah. wish you, you would have known if you would have been able to go like transpose yourself back to October, 2021, what was the one thing you wish you would have known then that you know now? Um, I wish I would have known to go, uh, you know, go find a seminar on like how to like, like go, go take a course, honestly. Um, You know, we just got back from the Alberta Municipalities Conference, which was like fantastic. Um, And I would have loved to look up um, like a a training course before I went in there, you know, because you get this training, you get all this information, but of course, like you're thrown in there and it's just, uh, what do they say? It's like drinking from a fire hose, <laughs> it's basically like that. So everything's all coming at you at once. And um, I think I, I would have liked to prepare some of some of those things and kind of just plant the seed there before I was actually sitting in the chair, I think, yeah. yeah. Being an elected official, especially in a small community, like, and I, I say small community because I'm, I'm in Calgary and anything yeah. compared to Calgary is small. Um, being a, an elected official in a community like Brooks, you go, you go to the coffee shop and you talked about this a little bit beforehand, but I want to dive into this a little bit more because if you go to the coffee shop, you know, those people, if you go to the grocery store, you know, the people at the, in the grocery store line, you go to pick up the mail. It's the exact same thing. 
How have you been able to balance the work and life aspect of that first year? Because I can imagine as a new counselor, you want to outreach, you want to talk to everyone because you want to hear their opinions, but you also have to sort of balance it because you have a husband and I can imagine that you guys want to go out on date night and don't want to talk about shop talk every night and you want to just go watch a movie or go out to dinner. So how do you balance that? Um. You know, it's not something that I'm particularly great at, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so I try and I've, I've had some practice um, because I'm a teacher, right? And um, being a teacher. Uh, that must be like double duty, being a teacher and an elected official. You must get hit with questions all the time. Yeah. So I can't go out for groceries without like during COVID when I could put my sunglasses and have the mask on, it was great. <laughs> Sometimes I could just go in and nobody would. <laughs> I'm going to try and get some bread, but um, I don't know. You know, it's been a process for me um, that's that's kind of been um, almost 10 years now. Like, especially, you know, my husband and I moved from Lethbridge to Brooks. Um, I don't, we just kind of felt like we were living in a fishbowl. And it, I'm not going to lie, it was challenging at first. Um, but, you know, it didn't take long to... Um, to really change how that felt. Like, at first, it felt like everyone's you know, wants to know your business and everyone is kind of, you know, you just feel like you're being watched all the time, but um, it just, it is, it's so comforting and warm. Like the people here, I can't tell you how wonderful they are. Um, so they'll, they'll it, respect your personal boundaries. If you say, can we talk about it tomorrow or send me an email, they'll do that? They, yeah. And I think, like I said, I don't think I'm particularly great at it. I think if I did say that they would, <laughs> Um, it's different. I think I'm, I'm better at it, um, as a teacher, like I said, uh, but yeah, so it's still something that I'm, I'm working on for sure. My husband is a saint because he just stands there so patiently while we just chat, chat, chat. Um, but I love it because like, really the people here are great. And I, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm always thinking of the next best thing. Well, hello. This is your friendly host of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I have some big news for you. I am pleased to announce that our show has partnered with Strategic Steps Incorporated to launch a brand new show on October 19th. The Political Trenches, Local Government at Work is a new show with a focus on local governments. Each episode, we will discuss the biggest stories from local governments and we will have a roundtable discussion on issues facing local governments today. Follow the news show by searching The Political Trenches on all social media platforms. We are looking forward to discussing local governments and heading into The Political Trenches. I want to talk about your community now. Um, and I want to ask this question and I want to preface it before you answer it. This is a conversation between Councillor Wardrop and myself. This is not Councillor Wardrop speaking for the entire council of the city of Brooks. It's just her and myself when I ask these questions. Um, Councillor, in your opinion, your opinion, I'm putting you on the spot right now. What is the biggest issue you believe is facing the city of Brooks today? Uh, I think the biggest issue is, is trying to retain a lot of our young professionals. So, you know, like you said, um, anything smaller than Calgary is, is rural, right? Like we are in a, we're, we're this rural with like just a hint of, of urban and um, it's it's hard to compete with some of those larger centers. So we're currently experiencing, you know, a shortage, like shortages of young professionals. And I say young, um, like professionals in general, but, but particularly young professionals who they'll come here, um, you know, start, start a job here and then they'll go back to, to a, larger a larger center. Um, you know, like, you know, doctors, teachers, um, I could say, I could speak specifically to teachers, you know, but, um, you know, other healthcare workers, dentists, other professionals. Um, and I think that's, that's one of our biggest issues is right now is trying to, um, you know, 
what is it that makes people want to stay here, which um, I think I have a good idea of what that is, and just really pushing um, and making that accessible for people so that they they want to build a practice here, right? That they want to stay here. They want to they want to raise their families here and really put down roots and become part of the community. So how are you in the city of uh, city of Brooks? helping alleviate that issue because uh you, you point out an issue that i think a lot of rural communities are facing right now because and i, I mean this res- respectfully to all communities because you're not the first person on this show and on this uh this series of shows that i've done interviews with that has addressed that issue how is the city of brooks addressing the labor shortage in young uh, professionals and trying to retain them after going away to Lethbridge and like yourself coming back. How, how is the city trying to address that issue right now? Um, I, from my perspective, I, I am approaching it as like a holistic issue, right? That like, it's the proactive, it's the proactive work of making Brooks like the best place to live that really would, will solve this because you know what, you can offer people, you can offer people money or um, housing or whatever, but if you don't, if you don't love the place that you're in, you're not going to want to stay there. Right. And there are so many things that makes Brooks such a wonderful place to live. And, you know, I think we're trying to really lean into those areas and, and uh, that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to build on that retention. You know, like we've got, um, we've got a great recreation. We've got um, lots of community events. When people come here, um, and actually somebody just said this to me the other weekend from, from Lethbridge, uh, you know, like, I'm so surprised at how much Brooks has, like you have so much here. And I could, I don't know, we should, I don't know. I don't know, we should stitch it on a pillow or something or put, make a sign. <laughs> like, as people say it almost word for word all the time, like, I never knew. I was so surprised that like Brooks has so much here. Um, and we do. It's just, uh, I think, a matter of, um, yeah, really, really leaning into what makes us unique and a great place to live and just really further developing those, those areas. And that will, that will aim in that retention. I just don't believe, like, you know, you can, like I said, I, I feel like, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a broken record here, but all the incentives, you know, that you could offer somebody isn't, isn't, I don't think going to be effective, as effective as um, truly loving and just immersing yourself in a community where you, where you just want to be and you want to stay. You bring up a good uh, sort of a side question that I wasn't going to ask, but you you open Pandora's box, so I'm going to oh. play within it for a few seconds. How do you attract people to a community like the city of Brooks when, let's be honest, you're so close to Medicine Hat, you're relatively close to Lethbridge, you're relatively close to city of Calgary. Um, and I've been to the city of Brooks a few times through my travels, and I can say it's a wonderful community. How do you attract people to the community? Because you're right, incentives don't work unless people are on the ground there, and they have that buy into that community. So what are you doing? And I say that, I don't say the council, but what are you doing to say, you know what, come to come to the city of Brooks because it does have all these amenities that people talk about and it gives you sort of a, a like a piece of heaven. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think that's a big part of it is that our location is wonderful for that, you know? So if, um, and this is a, this is another reason why I, I really feel like, you know, my, my perspective, my, like mid thirties, young family, working professional perspective really comes in handy, I think, is that um, uh, it's great that we are in between, you know, like we're part of that little triangle. We're we're like just an hour to Medicine Hat, an hour and a half to Lethbridge, two hours to Calgary. So it's so easy to go to, um, you know, like my husband and I were just in a show. uh, We were just at a show in Calgary last night. You know, it's a quick little whip up the highway two hours and come back and then you get to come back to your cozy wonderful little community um, that still has all of the amenities and all of the things that you really you want and you need but if you want to go to a bigger center it's so easy um, 
I think it's such a great selling point. And, and to be honest, when, when my husband and I decided to buy a house here to like really settle, we're like, okay, we're going to, we like it here. Like we're going to stay here. That was such a huge selling point. You know, um, it doesn't have to take away uh, from, you know, it, it, ac it actually adds, I think, to the appeal of, of our, of living in our community. You know, um, you don't have to deal with the traffic and the congestion. And, and if, you know, if the, if the city, that, that lifestyle is too big and too much, um, go experience it when you want and then come on home. Right. Agreed. I, I want you to wave a magic wand right now and say, okay, that issue is fixed. Retention of young professionals is fixed. It's going to be fixed by the end of your first term. What would be option? What would be priority number two for Councillor Wardrop to fix? Uh, you know, I think um, ooh, I think diversifying maybe um, our economy uh, a little bit would be would be up there. Um, as you may know, we've got uh, JBS, which is one of the largest meatpacking plants in the country. Uh, and it's an incredible employer, like in so many ways. Um, I can't tell you enough about how great it is, but it's uh, a huge, a huge part of our um, our economic drive and our payroll and our our, our population, right? Um, and so, as great as it is, I, you know, I think we should work on diversifying that a little bit and just not putting. Um, it's not, not even intentional, but all those eggs in one basket or just a few, um, it could really, it could interrupt our growth, right? And our, um, the consistency that we have here. So I would like to see that expand um, a little bit. I think so. And that, is, you know, there, think is there things right. being done to diversify? Because that's always a big issue that a lot of municipalities have is how do you grow what you already have, but also like you said, don't put all those eggs in the basket. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, the focus right now is more on, um, you know, because we don't have a magic wand, unfortunately, <laughs> so more of the focus right now is on um, retaining those young professionals and really building that, uh, building that, um, at that base for those, for those people. And I think, you know, once we had that, we'd have that security of, okay, now like, let's go take some more risks, right, and, and diversify a bit here. I want to ask a question that I was going to ask beforehand, but I'm going to ask it now because, well, it's sort of in the same vein. Um, you were elected in 2021 uh, on the edge of the pandemic. While the pandemic, love it or hate it, it's not over. People are still getting sick. People are still suffering from COVID-19. I'm one of them. I had it last week. It's a killer. Um, how did your ha uh, community handle uh, the pandemic from your perspective? Um, you know, I could say from, uh, from a, a government perspective, uh, the municipal government, um, and my dad was mayor, I have to say, um, and even if he wasn't, I, wow, I was so incredibly, um, impressed and proud of the way that my community, like our leaders handled that. Um, to me, that was such a moment of, of really, of real leadership, right? Um, you know, we were invited as citizens, right, to uh, to all the information that that we could get with a face, right. So our mayor was uh, on like on our social media, on Zoom, right, um, as much as possible, giving us all that information. Um, we we set up um, testing sites, right, so that and so many people showed up, just banded together, you know, to say like to get tested so that we could reduce our numbers. You know, with uh, JBS, they um, they had a, a great program. As soon as there was a vaccine, they had an immunization program. Like people just really came together, um, especially for that first, uh, what is it, two years? I don't know how long. It just, I have no concept. It feels of, like of, forever. It was just forever. But um, yeah, I was, I was really, I am, I'm really proud of, of the way that our, our leadership and just everybody in the community came together, um, our schools as well, I have to say. Yeah. You are in the midst of the recovery. You are uh, an elected official in the recovery phase of this pandemic. Um, 
it must be challenging and I, I, I'm not going to try and put words in your mouth here. So please correct me if I'm wrong. It must be challenging to balance the needs of recovery against the needs of moving the city forward because you don't want to leave people behind. There's a lot of mental health issues that came with this pandemic and you have to balance the needs of what people are going through, but also the needs of moving the city forward. How have you been able to do that? Because it must be challenging. And as you're heading into the next budget round, which is your budget, this is your council's budget. This is not remnants of the last budget. This is you. How, have, how are you going to look at this budget a little bit differently in the realm of recovery, but also growth? Yeah, it's tricky. Like that, it's hard. Um, I think, uh, you know, we've been keeping a close eye on, um, you know, how the pandemic has affected uh, revenue for the rec center, for example, right? Um, and fortunately, it seems like, and I don't want to jinx anything, but it seems like we're bouncing back okay. Um, but we are, we're keeping a close eye on that. Uh, something that you mentioned, though, mental health, um, wow, like, it's a huge issue. It's not just us, right? It's across the province, it's across the country, really. Um, and so, you know, I, I sit on some boards that, and, and I'm quite lo- vocal about, you know, what are we doing? Because <laughs> we need help, right? And uh, advocating a lot to other levels of government to, to, to help support us in that, um, because uh, it's, it's unavoidable. We actually, um, our FCSS did a quality of life survey and uh, it, we had some preliminary, just some raw data come back about the effects of uh, the pandemic on mental health. And unsurprisingly, <laughs> you know, it was, it was, you know, mo- a lot of adverse effects. So, um, but there are, there are people on the ground moving and working and thinking of, of um, innovative ways to, to help address this. And me personally, I am fortunate enough to uh, play a direct role in that, right? As a as a teacher, um, not a counselor, just uh, as just a counselor being able to advocate um, in terms of policy and decision making, but um, actually just firsthand working, right, working at that. I want to ask a poignant question now, and I did not prepare you for this one, and I didn't prepare you for a few of these, but this is one (laughs) I, I, I did not prepare you for at all. How hard is it to say no to people in your position? The reason I ask that, because you will probably get a hundred different emails from each week about certain issues that are very important to individual people, whether it's a pothole in front of Johnny's house down the street, whether it's a broken park swing, whether it be X, Y, or Z, you hear it all. At the end of the day, you have to batch that information up and then go to council and say, okay, what's the priority? What's the priority? Not that one person is going to be happy, but everyone is going to be happy. And at the end of the day, you have to go back to those people and say, I'm sorry, Johnny, we couldn't fix that pothole today, but it is on our list for next year or next week or next month or whenever that's going to get fixed. How hard is it to balance the needs of the many against the needs of the few to quote Star Trek? (laughs) Just like nerd here. (laughs) Nerd alert. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's hard. And I think that's, I don't know, off the top of my head, that might be the hardest part of this, right? Is that um, no matter what decision you make, you, you can't make everybody happy, right? And I think such a huge part of that is in the way that you, you, you approach it um, and, and how you communicate, how you make those decisions. So like, I really believe that, um, you know, uh, integrity is so important in those decisions, right? Like really, like if you can, if you know that in your heart, that you know that you made the best possible decision, then saying no isn't like, I mean, it's hard, but it, it shouldn't be that difficult in theory because you could, as, and then as long as you communicate that, 
and you're genuine in your intention. Do people, people uh, do, you. do people understand when you say no and you communicate why you're saying no? I think really like the vast majority of people do. Um, and, and it is like, it, it's, and it, but it has to be done um, in a genuine open way because uh, and that's something I'm, you know, that I do, I think I do well, is I, I am genuine. There's not a lot of, if I don't know, I'll just say, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't know everything. Why would you, nobody expects you to know everything, right? Well, you're um, an elected official. You should know everything <laughs> counselor. Don't you read Facebook and Twitter? Elected oh. officials should know everything. I joke, please don't send hate mail to the counselor or me. I really don't need to sort through that this week. Oh my gosh. And that's, and that's, and it, but, and that to that point though, there will always be people that no matter what you do, uh, you're not going to make them happy either. Right. So what? I, <laughs> I know this is breaking news live from the scene. You're not going to make everyone happy. Um, but I, I really do think like, you know, and that's the reason why too, there are, there's not just me, right. I have, but there's, there's six counselors and a mayor. And we work together on that. So, um, and intentions are great, but it's intentions, it's 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 educated intentions, right? With a back and forth with, and then paired with communication and that genuine, that genuine intention, almost like most people are really understanding and and get back to them on it, right? Like, you know, follow up. I that that's that's what I think. It's not easy, but it can be done if um, if it's approached in the right way. You've already answered my next segment's questions, but I'm going to pose it. But I'm going to be a little bit more specific on it. What makes the city of Brooks such a unique place? Uh, okay, so it's all about uh, it's all about the diversity here. Um, and that may seem like on the surface a really simple answer, but the diversity here actually just really, it permeates everything um, from, it doesn't matter where you work, uh, you are exposed to this multicultural, just, it, it, I, there's not even a word, it's so special. Come to Brooks and see. <laughs> A special just as a plug for my community but but you know um there are people from all over the world here uh like 35 percent of our population are new canadians you know so you literally can't go buy a coffee without interacting with somebody that has a totally different story than you and that is that's what makes us unique it has the energy in this city is different than than um, you know, than other rural, with a hint of urban, right? The cities in Alberta, um, it it's just, it's. Sorry, I'm like now I'm struggling. This is like the easiest question, but no, but it sounds it's something like it's, that, it's intangible. It is just such a wonderful experience. Like I'm so glad that like my kids grow up in this Brooks. When I grew up in Brooks. Um, although it was a lovely community, it didn't have that that energy, that that excitement, that novelty. That you know, uh, it's it's all the benefits of growing up in a, a metropolitan city, like a large center, um, and then still having that small town community feel. Um, I yeah. appreciate that. And I want to follow up uh, with this because I have listeners and viewers from across this great country. I have viewers and listeners across this great planet of ours. If they were to come to the city of Brooks tomorrow, what would you suggest they do? What are the tourist spots that Councillor Wardrop would tell a tourist tomorrow to go visit? I would say book yourself in for a week because you're not going to be able to do it all in one day. Um, so I mentioned our location before, right? Um, like we've got two lakes that are like 15 minutes out, right? Um, you beaches, boating, fishing, all of that, um, camping. And then half an hour the other way, we've got Dinosaur Provincial Park, which if you've never been 
I say to everyone, like, you have to go, you have to go experience it. It's, it's incredible. Um, and so, so just the, those, I guess, more tourist attractions we've got like right there. And then you come back to Brooks and then eat all the food here. The food, the restaurants are incredible. They are next level. Um, and thanks to our diversity, right? So you can get you know, you can get sushi, you can get Indian food, you can get Thai food, you can get Mexican food, you can get Somali food, you can get food from Ethiopia, you can, I could go on and on and on, um, you know, and, and it's, it's authentic, you know, like when I say we have Mexican food here, I'm not talking about taco time, which we do have taco time, there's nothing wrong with taco time, but like we have real Mexican food, right, like it's, so the restaurants here are, are just incredible, and the people are like, like I said, like those, those people, that, that's them, right? They'll come and tell you their stories. They have come to Brooks and thankfully, right, to, to start this business. Their families are here. They'll tell you where they're from. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, so then the, the, the natural follow-up question to that is this. After a stressful day, after a long day at council, after a long day at school, What's the one place in town that you can go to and just decompress? Is it a park? Is it a business? Is it a walking trail? Is it a drive out to a certain location in the town? What is that spot for Councillor Wardrobe to go and just decompress within the community? Um, oh, there's a couple, a couple of places, I guess. But we do have wonderful parks here. So um, I'll take my kids out down to Lake Stafford and we'll do a lap around the park we'll play on the playground um and we do have a couple breweries here which are great too i have to say that's our that's a new addition um and a distillery actually that i finally got out to um just about half an hour outside of town too um and and like i said like so so going out there i love to eat out um i like to go yeah have a have a beer and and chat with people like when I say the people here are something else, like they really are. There's, I get my energy from, from people. I love people. It's why I teach. It's why I, I am a counselor. Um, and, you know, if I'm like having a day, I, that's my way of decompressing is like finding some different energy. If I'm in a, right. If I'm in a low space, I want to go out and find the people that, uh, you know, will bring me up and they're always out there. <laughs> Councillor Wardrop, I want to thank you so much for sitting down for the last 40 minutes and talking about yourself and your community. It's an honor and pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. I, I did as well. I want to remind everyone um, that if you can, put down your cell phone for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. Helps our democracy, helps our society, and helps us be a better people at the end of the day. So with that, this has been municipal, well, part of municipal month on the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking. <laughs>